Hey, it's Joe here. So I thought I would do a summary of my experiment with raw till four reversing diabetes. So does raw till four reverse diabetes? This is the question that I asked. So what I did is I undertook a two week study of the raw till four lifestyle. The idea is to eat raw foods, basically fruit and some greens for breakfast and lunch and have a cooked meal for dinner. The nutrient uh, rations, ratios I should say, aimed for are 90% from carbohydrates, 5% from fat and 5% from protein. There are other nutritional guidelines but you can see that if you just go to rawtill4.com uh, that will take you through to the forum where you can ask questions and find out more about the program. The science to support that low fat, high carbohydrates reverse diabetes is provided by leading doctors, Dr. Neil Bernard, uh, and Dr. M Michael McGregor, but also uh, John McDougall has his information there, and, and among others, if you just search, you know, high high carbohydrate, low fat, reverse diabetes, you'll come lots of medical research that supports this the case. Actual studies done with patients that have reversed diabetes. Um, so, Dr. Neil Bernard, it's neilbernard.org. John McDougall, you can go to drmcdougall.com and Dr. Michael McGregor, nutritionfacts.org and all the findings are peer reviewed. So, you know, all of these things we're looking at here, it's not just someone's blog. Um, about, about me, I've been diabetic since 2005. I'm 100 pounds overweight. I have very poor blood sugar. It's around 10 to 12 on average. That's, that's pretty high. Uh, 180 to 220 MGDL in the US and my HAC1 was 11.9 which is fairly chronic. Uh, it's not good news by the way basically. Um, I also have a 15 year binge eating disorder. This is why my diabetes has got so bad because um, I've known how to solve this before I even got diabetes. I started trying to solve this before I had diabetes. I knew it was going to come, it runs in my family, but I couldn't change my diet, I couldn't stick to anything raw, you know, while I was trying raw basically, and I just couldn't stick to it. Um, so I have a very low compliance to any product program, I'm not joking, I'm averaging two or three days. Um, it used to be longer, but as I've got so used to failing when I start a program, I tend to fail it within in, in the first couple of days. I just, I just get such discomfort that I don't know what else to do. And I've tried a lot of different things, but that's not about this. This is about what I did do here. And to be honest, this was pretty successful um, given my standards in the past. So what I did, um, this is like an average, average good day. The fat was around 17 grams. The carbs, 866 grams. Like what diabetics can eat that many carbs, right? Uh, 3,700 calories, so I'm not even hungry. And I'd be having big banana smoothies, 1,000 grams, uh, 1,200 grams, 1,200 grams. I'd have this special soup that I made with beans um, and tomatoes, etc. So I was doing a lot more beans than, than rice. In the full Raw Till 4 program, they recommend less, be less beans, more rice. But for me, it's the other way around because the diabetes respond very well to beans. Nevertheless, you can see I'm eating a pretty good diet. Right? I'm not. I'm not in any way calorie restricting. I felt very good on this. A less compliant day would be when I slip into more durians. I'm sorry, it looks like I've cut off the uh, calories there, but total day was three thousand six hundred. But it's not so much that. It's not the calories that's the problem. It's the it's the fat. So you see, similar amount of calories, but the fat seventy five grams. That's because I'm having these durians and that pushes up the fat content. And that needs to be below 20 grams, but even so, I still had good results with this program, even if a couple of days were like that. Uh, on, a, on a slip up day, the reason why I'm not looking at data past day nine is, it, is at the end of um, day nine, I started having tortilla chips uh, and salsa and other stuff like that. And it just started to push my fat levels up to the hundreds and you know the next few days after that the compliance got very low but i still had good results but i just don't want to include the days where i wasn't completely compliant so here is the uh the full two weeks 
And what we're looking at is from here down to day nine. And you can see it's on day nine, the compliance started going all over the place. There was a little bit of falling off here, but I, I, it, I still had good results. I didn't do it again for a few days and then boom, I, I, lost, I lost control. Um, but as I said, this has got nothing to do with raw till four. This is, this is all. This is all me. Uh, as I said, I've had fifteen years of non-compliant eatings to any program. So that's not what we're measuring here. And to be honest, the raw till four was probably the easiest one that's got a raw component in it that I've ever followed. And I'm not just saying that. You know, my my raw was just so difficult for me. But at least with raw till four, I've got some chance. But anyway, I'll get into that in a bit. Let's have a look here. So on average, it's about 3,000 calories for the, for the nine days per day. Uh, carbs was about 600 carbs, which is great because you're getting to eat nice food, like sweet food. It, it tastes so good. Uh, fats was, was still higher than what I'd like. The ratios were about uh, 86, uh, 7, 5, something like that. Um, not as great as I'd like, but that's because I had the durians and I had a jar of vegan aids. It didn't take a lot. That's the one thing with this diet. If you're going to do it, you have to be on it because it didn't take a lot for me to mess up the fat ratios. It's so easily done because fats are so dense in calories and so dense in volume, you can put a couple of blobs on something and think, oh, it's not a lot, but it's basically, it's made your food. Like if you put a blob, a spoon of mayonnaise on a stick of celery, you've made that a high fat meal and you'll be thinking you're having celery. You're not, you're now having fat. Um, so yeah, so that was that, and in general, um, you know, as I said, carbs were pretty high, that was pretty good. Um, where is it, let's see, what's next? Uh, there's the fats, omega-3, omega-6s, that's mostly due to the vegan aids, otherwise the diet gives you a very good omega-3, omega-6 ratio, there's too many omega-6, but that's because of the jar of vegan aids. Same with the fats, that was literally only one jar of Vegan A's brought the ratios, but I was double what I was, my target was, which was 20. But um, I didn't know that was the target at the time. I found out afterwards from Dr. Neil Bernard. Um, in raw to foot, I recommend 30 grams, but it's not specifically aimed at diabetics. This is a diabetic version of it. So, so if you can get it to 20 grams of fat, you're going to do great. Um, as you can see, that where do you get your protein from? From fruits and vegetables. Where'd you get your minerals from? From fruits and vegetables. Where'd you get all that, all that potassium from? From bananas. No one's getting poisoned on that. You can't get, you'd have to eat. I think Freely mentioned you've got to eat 300 bananas in like an hour to get poisoned. Uh, vitamins, where'd you get your vitamins from? Well, you've got to get some B12 in, but I made a video about that. And vitamin D, I live in Thailand, but other than that, I'm smashing in the vitamins. Uh, and these are the results of the blood sugar. So look, so this is my uh, first day prior, the control day. So what would happen is that I'd, um, that's my wake up blood sugar. I had a, a, a big banana smoothie, went up to 400, came down here, excuse me, sorry. Uh, had something else to eat, came down here, had another smoothie there or dinner, came down there, went, that, went this way. So very erratic, look how big those peaks are in blue. But then on day nine, doing what I've done, I even had some readings inside the safe range and I spent all day just outside it, which is wonderful. That makes me feel much more confident that if I continued with this, that would edge down below that number. Um, and these are my wake up blood sugars. So as you can see, when my compliant was mostly higher, just boom, 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 literally straight line. It couldn't get down fast enough, four days. Then I started having the durians and then the vegan A, so I kept my blood sugar a bit high, but it still came down a lot. There's, there's no reason why that would not sink down into the safe range in another three to four weeks. Um, so, summary, conclusions. So compared to a more restrictive diet, raw to four diets, raw to four is much easier because it's like a mini raw retreat, punctuated by a cooked dinner. So I wake up, right, I've got to be raw till four o'clock. I can do that. Anyone can be raw till four o'clock. Then you have your cooked meal. What I was dealing with before when I was doing raw is now I'm raw forever. 
and that would just make me want to rebel. And any bit of cooked food that touched my mouth, I'd feel guilty about. And if I really fancied some hot soup, I'd be like, oh, I'm so weak. And I'd end up binging out on hot burgers. Where this one, I had slip ups, but they weren't binges. They were um, a bit too much fat, a bit too much durian, a, a jar of vegan aids, which is just random. But I do believe that this is just a much more manageable way for people that have difficulty with dietary compliance. If you don't have difficulty with dietary compliance, it's just education. Once you're educated, you can stick to it. But if you have dietary compliance, then raw till four is a good way to go. Um, blood sugar came down very fast despite eating 12 fold the amount of carbs recommended by the high fat, low carb proponent. So, so medical industry says we'll cut out the sugars and they want you on like 50 grams of carbs a day. I'm doing 600, 600. That's 12 times what they recommend and I'm getting better blood sugar results. Uh, the only issue was my compliance. This is it. The diet was easy to do. Even buying the fruit was easy to do. Even cooking the meals was easy to do. There are other diets out there like um, uh, Neil Bernard's own diet, but when I look through the recipe book, it's so complicated, so many different ingredients. If you're good at that, then that's fine. Uh, sprouted rye with, with fricasseed cucumbers and uh, blended tomato stuffed bell peppers and uh, all this other stuff. And I was looking at it and I'm dyslexic, so I find this stuff very tortuous. Well, with raw to four, it's basically fruit all day, which I can do, just that's a fruit, I can eat that. And dinner, rice in the rice cooker, or beans, in, in my case, beans in the rice cooker, fill it full of vegetables and, and pour a sauce on the top. So for the non-kitchen creators like myself, it was, it, it's, it's basket simple. <laughs> it really is. I just someone made a dinner tonight, someone sent me a recipe, it's just basically get a rice cooker, fill it full of uh, lentils, tomatoes, curry powder, cumin, turmeric, um, uh, and that was it. And, 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 and cook that for took 20 minutes and it was delish. So I'm really happy about that. Um, but I began to overeat fats on the raw food diet just because of my uh, my past basically it's it, I just had a very unfortunate history of food but this made the remaining data unreliable my own blood sugar didn't go any higher it just stayed where it was but it's like why look at that um, I got more volatile again but why look at that let's look at what I did stick to because if I want diabetics who have a high degree of compliance to do this so you can demonstrate it even better than I can I've gone through the the pioneering stage of actually showing that you can do this, that you don't have to fear this amount of carbohydrates, but I would like other diabetics to actually do this if you've got compliance and give it a shot. I mean, I'm still gonna do it, but my focus is gonna shift, which is what it says here. It's gonna shift to compliance rather than reporting. The difficulty that I'm having is that the amount of effort it takes to compile these reports, to record all my blood sugar, I'm, I'm sticking my fingers 10 times a day, I'm writing down all these numbers, I'm weighing myself, I'm, I'm writing all my calories down, I'm building this record of this data, and to do it on my own, it's just, it, 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 it makes me binge it, basically, it makes me want to slip up. Who, who wants to do that? Who wants to record, like, to this level of detail? I, I want to support others but I've got to support myself so what I'm probably going to do is go towards a, a weekly system where maybe once a week I'll check my blood sugars for a day and report that and uh, but I'm not going to do this level of, of reporting because it just makes my compliance so difficult it really is it's reflexivity you see it, the observer can change the outcome and because I'm recording this so much, it's, it's taken away my energy to be able to comply. Like some nights, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting the right sleep. I should be in bed by 10 o'clock, but I'm up at midnight because I'm still re re compiling these reports. It's like, I don't want to go on about it, but basically I put all the data into, into chronometer, I then extract it all into, I don't extract, I type it by hand into Excel. I then run each chart I then print out each chart and then I put it into Photoshop to put the 
the bands on it of where the higher and lower bands are and then put it all, all into PowerPoint. <laughs> I then film it in PowerPoint uh, using ScreenFlow. I then export it all as a, as, a, as a video and then that gets uploaded. Meanwhile, I've also edited my journal which has all my readings and foods in it as well, and that goes up. So I'm doing like three, four hours a day on this. And it, I need to, I need, I could probably do it in the future, but f at least for a couple of months, I've got to get onto the compliance, let my energy be in compliance. So I want to apologize to you all for not being able to, to provide what I want to provide to this community. But with all the washing up and the cooking and the shopping for fruit and I'm crap at all of that really and then doing all this as well it's just it, 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 I'm exhausted by the time and, and I'm detoxing as well and adjusting to a new diet and, there's all, and all, all kinds of things going on cravings going on where's the energy to, to fight that so I've just something has to give and I think I've done a good job to sh demonstrate what's possible with this in just nine days nine days but now I need to to give this gift to myself. And that's gonna be, I'll, I'll be more successful if I'm not constantly looking at my blood sugar, constantly looking at my weight, constantly assessing, assessing the, the success of the program. I trust it, I trust it fully. I don't have to prove it works, I can see it works. Now what I've got to do is to create an environment that allows me to implement it fully. So that's what I'm going to be doing, but it really does work. I mean, I felt amazing doing this and I feel really happy that I can actually, I can eat some raw food, I can eat some cooked food and, and I can lower my, my blood sugar without a doubt. I'm not even, I'm so confident in this now. That's another reason why I don't need to record it, it's done. So in conclusion then, I fully support this lifestyle and I'm pleased with the results. I will continue and I'll re report the outcome at some stage, maybe weekly, maybe monthly, I'm not sure yet, we'll see. I will increase the intake of beans as they really help blood sugar tremendously. I know this isn't so much in the raw to poor program, but freely and during the aren't diabetics, but the beans are crazy. Like, like if, I, if, if my blood sugar's at like eight and it's six o'clock at night and I have a bean meal, my blood sugar will be seven after the meal. What's that? How's that even possible? I just ate food, right? But it doesn't, the blood sugar goes down. If I have rice, and, and please, please, please do not take this out of context. If you have not, not got diabetes, and you probably haven't, right? The rice does, you want more carbs in rice. The reason why they recommend the rice is because it has higher carbohydrate than the beans, so you get more of a carbohydrate load from rice. But if you're diabetic, you want calories over, over carbs with no fat. So low fat, beans are low fat, you swap out a bit more protein, but no one's ever got sick from overloading protein from beans or, do you know what I mean? So that's, that's, it's like you reduce the carbs and give your body more of a chance to respond to processing carbohydrates. It allows you to, increase your carbability which is the word that i've made up by eating beans and bring rice in later but for me until my blood sugar is consistently normal and there's no trace of diabetes i'm going to have beans exclusively in, instead of rice so beans lentils lentils and beans beans i just i just put them in the rice cooker not black beans and kidney beans you've got to soak and put them cook them a different way but all the lentils they cook just like rice in a rice cooker and that's what i'm having as my carbohydrate staple dinner and the fats must be below 20 grams i read through dr neil bernard's book again i missed this um now during rider and freely i recommend they recommend about 30 grams of car uh, grams of fat per day um built dr neil bernard recommends about 20 grams of what i calculated that if you stick to rice and b bananas mangoes fruit you know that kind of stuff keep away from the durians or any overt fats then you can get 3,500 calories in your din in your whole day and still have 20 grams. So you're not going to be hungry, even at 20 grams of fats. Um, okay. What's the last bit here? Are there any more? 
Okay, so as I said, I'll stop reporting with such detail because it's challenging to be both subject and object as a diabetic. I need to be the subject more. So compliance is key. If I'm going to get out of this health mess that I've created, I need compliance 100%. And it's not going to happen being a researcher. I need to be a, a health creator. I've gained the confidence to continue this diet fully. I have seen a marked improvement in my health and well-being. And my blood sugar is not far from normal in just nine days. I'm cruising around seven and eight in nine days, which in the US terms is like 120s, 150s. I'm kissing the top of the band. So I'm pretty sure if I continue along this way with, with, with more compliance, because that was at 47 grams fat average. Imagine what it's like if I get it down to 20. Then I think I'll get into that area quite quickly. Um, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed that. Please share this with any diabetic friends you have. It'd be great to get more people taken on this challenge and just do the best you can. I managed 14 days in total, nine days of compliance. Um, my next time I do this, I'm going to try and do 30 days of compliance. And I think if I'm not reporting it, I reckon that'd be possible. But get others involved. Let's just get a whole army of diabetics reversing themselves using Raw to 4 with this modified version and um, get in the forum, post journals. Speak to you soon.